Hey everyone, so today I wanted to make a story time video because something had recently happened to me and I didn't think I would ever be in this situation and I wanted to tell you guys about it. So also if you hear sounds or see movements behind me, my dog's in my room with me and she's having a lot of fun playing with her favorite toy. But anyway, I wanted to introduce myself. My name's Catherine and I got scammed into thinking that I got a job. <laughs> And I feel like it was one of those situations where I had no idea as I was going through the whole process that it was a scam until like a day or two before I realized it was a scam and I had some kind of red flags that I noticed went off in my head but I didn't, I honestly wasn't like, I was like oh it's fine, like it's whatever. And then there was a day where it just kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. And I felt so stupid and it's just like, it just kind of, I don't know, it just surprised me and you know, I graduated with a master's degree in 2020 and I thought that, you know, I wouldn't fall for something like this and I also, I tend to think the best in people, I have more of an optimistic mindset and this taught me to just basically be a bit more careful. I wanted to talk about what happened and I basically just wanted to share you guys things that I've learned, some tips, some red flags to look out for. So today is Tuesday, January 19th and I basically applied in early December to a job. I One thing I like to do with job searching is to have my email get a lot of email alerts but what I will say is that you have to be careful when applying to jobs through third party type places. Basically in the future I'm not going to be applying through some kind of third party website especially if I don't know that organization. So basically what happened to me was that I got one of my daily email alerts with a list of jobs and it was a zip recruiter email and one of the actually I think it was the top job that was on that list was digital content creator and then it had the logo of the company and I'm I probably shouldn't say the company it was for because it is a legitimate company. Yeah, so basically it was a role that I thought was really interesting. I clicked and I read through the responsibilities, through what I'd be doing, and it all looked really interesting. I had not actually heard of the company though, and I looked up the company, and it's a legitimate place. You know, they have an office in the States, they have a few. And I did some research and I thought, you know, why not apply? Because I feel like when you're applying to places, you're applying to a lot because there's going to be a lot of no's when it comes to applying to jobs or internships or whatever. And this was early December. Then I would say a week later in mid-December, I got an email saying, we found your application very impressive. We want to schedule an interview, blah, blah, blah. And it all looked very official. No weird typos, no weird spelling, nothing out of the ordinary. And I was like, okay, great. So I set up a interview. I don't remember. I think it was maybe like a few days to a week later. And the first red flag is to that basically what they had me do is they had me download an app onto my phone so that I could communicate with a certain person from the company. I know lots of businesses like to use certain platforms for communicating, whether it's Microsoft Teams or Zoom or whatever it may be. So I downloaded this app, I connected with the woman, and we set up a time. So yeah, the red flag is basically one to just not download things onto your phone. I don't know if I knew this and I forgot or if I just didn't know this, but basically through apps, sometimes people are able to like hack into your phone and be able to find certain information in your phone through an app and depending if you go onto your settings like if you have an iPhone you go into your settings and you see the app it will then tell you like what access in your phone that app can like see and I saw that that app had access to like my camera and like notes and other things like that which is scary anyway so that's the first red flag don't like download I feel like it sounds so obvious when I say it and I feel I feel I felt so stupid through this whole process but you know I feel like these scammers have gotten really talented in scamming people and they're also kind of, I will say, I may be vulnerable in a way because, you know, I've recently graduated in 2020 and I'm just trying to figure out my next step. I've always been a student my whole life and so having to find like a job or, you know, what I'm doing next um, post grad school. It's definitely been very anxious time for me. Don't download things 
when you're you know very early on in the process don't do it until you know for sure it's a real job until you've talked to the people um, nowadays whether it's like face to face via zoom or phone call or something like that just don't do anything too early on um, I think with me I'm also just I tend to be a you know I don't want to be not mean I don't want to inconvenience people I try to be nice and I didn't want to like say no I was just like following their instructions and honestly at this point I had absolutely no idea that it was a scam the second thing was when I had my actual interview, I knew who it was gonna be with. And so I was there at that time, I got on that app and it was basically just the messaging app. And she was asking me kind of like, actually she was telling me information about the role. Um, this is what you're gonna be doing. This is what you can expect. This is like the hours per week, the pay um, benefits, what you'd be getting, uh, making sure I understand everything, like in very detail, like, long messages of just like what I'd be getting all sounded perfectly fine and normal and then she started going on to the interview and asking me questions like a normal interview the questions didn't seem weird at all very common questions normal feedback no weird typos or anything like that the only thing I would say which is another big red flag and was something I didn't view as a red flag but I thought was weird at the time was that I assumed she was going to either call or video call me because every interview I've had was one of the two or in person and she never did that it was just a texting interview so basically it was a long interview it lasted like almost an hour and um, so that was the next thing and then I want to say this is mid-December and then like a few days later not even a week later I get a call so I did actually talk to someone on the phone and they said hey this is from this is blank from blank company and I want to let you know you got the job and I was like not expecting that because it was so soon I'm used to with jobs or internships taking forever to hear from them or never hearing from them and so I was surprised that it was so quick and I don't think that's a red flag I'm sure there are times where like you hear back quickly <laughs> but um also I know that this company they have an office in DC and I was gonna be working remote so I was like fine with that um because i'm in the seattle area but i went to school in dc and their area code i know the area code and the call i got was from the dc area code so i was like okay this makes sense he's calling from like the headquarters and all of that but i do remember also having a weird connection with my phone and i do have weird connection issues sometimes at my house but i feel like now that i look back on it maybe it was somebody that was outside of the country and they were calling my house and they somehow were able to make it look like it was an area code that was from DC. And then I asked if I could have until the end of the month to say yes or no because it was like not even two weeks till Christmas and they were fine with it. And then I messaged literally on New Year's Eve and then I didn't hear back from them and a week later I messaged again being like, hey, I wanted to let you know I accepted the job. And then the next following Monday, because I think I sent that over the weekend, they responded and this was, so today's Tuesday, January 19th. This was last week, Monday. And on Monday, I got a message saying, great, we're so happy to have you on board. And it was like full speed. And I get when you start a job, it's a lot of paperwork, it's a lot of back and forth, but I just felt so overwhelmed because I was talking to the woman on that um, app that I had downloaded about just like my responsibilities, my duties, scheduling out things, blah, blah, blah. And then I was talking to someone from Human Resources via email and she was sending me forms about signing like, you know, that I'm good with the roles and responsibilities for this job. They also sent me forms for like my bank account, like routing number, account number to be able to send me like my weekly paycheck and then they also sent me like w4 tax forms and they sent me I'm trying to remember because they sent me a fair amount of paperwork they asked for like a id so whether a passport or a driver's license and then they sent me like also just their kind of like code of business like what to expect from this company and this all looks very legitimate i'm i feel like this is actually the same paperwork that this company in real life uses and these scammers just somehow got that paperwork from them in some way and i've talked to professionals that i've you know been able to connect on linkedin and they have all they've told me like 
scammers are have gotten really good at what they do i was overwhelmed with all the paperwork which i feel like is normal with a new job a lot of paperwork a lot of talking back and forth what did start getting weird to me was that they were asking me to basically give them money basically this job would would have been 30 hours a week and because it was remote they were saying you know they need a way to track my hours and there's this program that needs to be put into a computer um, to track those hours but first you need a code and you need to pay for the code and then you need um, the actual program itself and that's another separate payment and they also wanted me to buy an ipad of a certain kind from a local verizon store as well as an iphone and that would be like your separate business iphone i was able to figure out it was a scam before buying that equipment which is really good <laughs> um but they also they sent me a reimbursement form so it would have been something i would have had to fill out and then they said they were going to pay back for the iphone and the ipad and also each month i would have to you know pay to be able to have my iphone and ipad working and all that kind of stuff and they would also pay for that monthly cost the only thing is i did manage to send them the first payment i did you know make it easy and send them money and it's not a small amount but it's not a huge amount um and it was for that code to be able to track the system and whatnot and i remember asking them i'm like why if you're gonna reimburse me just like pay for it right away and then give it to me and they, they said something along the lines of this is how we used to do it but now with covid and the restrictions it just got so complicated because then the stuff would be sent to us and then to you and it would be it would take like a month plus and we want you to start within a week or two and so it's just a more seamless process if you buy if you pay for it now and then we'll send you the money or something like that and i was like you know fresh out of like school like yeah sure that makes sense like i don't know like covid's new like we're all kind of learning you know and dealing with the changes that it brings as it comes along but anyway so i should have seen other red flags that wanting to buy equipment and them asking for money i feel like that is such a red flag and the fact that like that didn't like go off in my brain until later it's just like in the moment i just felt so overwhelmed um with having to do all these forms having to you know do all these different things and they also were having me do different tasks because i was going to be a digital content creator they had me fill out things like what is the importance of communication in you know the workplace and how does the workplace benefit like and i did those kinds of tasks which gave no personal info so they had me like you know almost working in a way along with the filling out forms and communicating and stuff like that so you know they've learned like <laughs> they've learned how to trick people because i was doing proper tasks and assignments throughout the week and i actually called my bank today and like filed a report they actually then two days later asked for a little over a thousand dollars for the actual program to track my hours and at that point like i remember them asking before i even said yes for the job for an ipad and an iphone and i was like okay and then i remember telling them like i don't remember you asking me for that there's going to be these payments in addition to having to buy like an ipad and an iphone and they were saying oh we need it because to track your hours blah 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 and we'll don't worry we'll reimburse you for your money if the form the reimbursement form is confusing we'll go through it one by one and the person i was talking to was extremely nice like super understanding they never were like pressuring me to send them more money they were as soon as i said like can i have a day or two they're like oh of course no problem we want you to be comfortable and she was telling me even like personal info like oh where where are you gonna have your workspace in your house i like to have it in this room because i have children and i like to keep my children in this part of my house and then have like a good workspace where i could have like good focus and this and that and i did look up the person and she exists her exact name her exact picture role um where she works at and i even remember looking at it like oh she's real she's on linkedin but then i thought like of course like anyone could post to be anyone on the internet like catfishing it's a thing we all know it's a thing but anyway with the second payment where they wanted me to pay over a grand i remember also throughout last week i had a literally like a breakdown 
almost every single day except for one day in the week. At first it was because I felt so overwhelmed with the tasks they were having me do and everything and I get overwhelmed and stressed really easily. And then later on in the week, it was because I learned it was a scam and I was freaking out over that. So last week was a hard week, but I'm feeling way better now. Now that I know, you know, what I know and I went back and I tried to change my passwords and all of this stuff. And it's just, I feel a lot better now, but it's just, it was a tough week. <laughs> but anyway, with that cost, I made up some kind of excuse where I told them I had a part-time internship. I was, I made up some story and I was like, oh, I am not going to be able to get the funds for until next week or until a few days so I will not be able to pay you for a few days. You know, in my mind I'm like, yes, I'm going to be reimbursed and I'll be, you know, working so I'll be getting paid, but it's just a lot at once and I just made up some story. I'm so glad because I did not waste a grant. I know I'm not full of money. I can't just throw things around. But yeah, that was another thing. Um, so obviously the biggest red flag asking for money. And then another thing is they basically had made an email for me and sent me it to set up my email. And, you know, I was like, yeah, of course, I'm going to have my own email for this company. I'm a full time employee with them. But then now that I think about it, the email was at a Gmail account and it ended with at blank company name dot careers instead of like at gmail.com and I learned that with gmail it's supposed to always end with a dot com or a, you know at gmail.com and so they basically made like a fake account and it made, they made it an admin account so I couldn't go back and delete it I was trying so hard last week once I found out it was a scam on figuring out how I could delete this email because I was trying to get freaked out that they could like hack my other emails because I have multiple Gmail accounts that are unrelated to them that are just my own personal one like my school one or my yeah personal one um, or could this Gmail account they made hack my computer with all my files and I was also thinking like my Bank of America apps on my phone and I was like freaking out um, and I learned basically I had to like post a post on Google forums that they can't hack anything outside that account so basically I learned I can't delete it so I just basically ch saw that password and made sure that password I used for that account is not a password I'm using for any other account and I made sure I actually changed pretty much all my passwords that's what I was doing Sunday is going through and like changing all my passwords it's a very fun way to spend a weekend basically the way I found out that this was a scam my mom when I told her the job she looked up the website of the company which I did but I didn't look on the careers page because I was like well why would I do that I already have a job and when she clicked the careers page literally on top it like as a warning it was recruitment fraud like warning kind of a thing and when I saw that and she showed me that that's when I realized in like a split second that I was most likely in a scam like my heart just sank and it's crazy that I barely had any idea that was a scam until I saw that and all of a sudden things were making sense and my mom was like oh I'm sure it wasn't a scam and I'm just like having a you know minor freak out without trying to display it on my face but my mom actually showed me what you could do and she saw the URL for the actual company website and then she compared it to like the email and then the other um, scam you know URL and you can actually go on this website called GoDaddy and basically see where the URL originates from, when it was made, like what date, what country it was made in, what like domain are they using, are they using GoDaddy or something else. And I was able to see like the real company they started in 2008, the actual URL of the company, it was a GoDaddy domain. And then the one I was talking with, it was like cheapnames.com was the domain and they originate from Panama and just things that were not connecting. And as soon as my mom saw the URL, that's when she noticed that it was a scam. So that definitely like just made clear about what was going on. And so that's another thing is basically with telling my story and everything and all these different tips, I just want you all to be careful when applying to jobs online. You know, it's always like you don't think it's gonna happen to you until it does, and I just feel so stupid dealing with this, but my parents and friends have been so nice to me and just trying to reassure me that, you know, this happens, this could happen to anyone, and scammers are really good and talented at what they do. And I'm just really glad that I noticed all of this before 
you know, going to the Verizon store and buying more before giving them more personal information, before, you know, paying for that grant that they also asked for. That's been my story with how I got scammed into thinking that I got a job. Yeah, basically the tips that I learned was apply directly onto the website, check the URL and make sure it's legit. Don't download weird apps or whatever. Don't give money. Don't give any personal information or download any software. Hope you got some enjoyment or entertainment from listening to my story i like listening to story times and that it helps you or prevents you from a future scam situation so thank you all so much for watching and i hope you have a lovely day bye